You won't believe it, everybody, but I am addressing you from the middle of East Africa, here in the Mara Triangle, a quite astonishingly beautiful piece of ground, 510 uh, square kilometers, 350, 350 square miles of utterly magnificent Africa, and I'm going to have, show you. Firstly, I must introduce the team, though. Mr. Graham Wallington on camera today, and in the background, tied in by thousands and thousands of different wires and aerials and various other things, is Peter Brat. Now, come and have a look here. Come on, Graham. Now, we're just going to put the camera on a tripod. It's going to get a little bit, a little bit bumpy. There we are. <laughs> and now, what you are doing, where you are looking, is straight across the Mara River, everybody into the Mara National Park. We're in the Mara Triangle and that is a very small portion of one and a half million wildebeest that come into this area on a yearly basis arriving in late July and departing somewhere around October heading down back south into Tanzania and it is across this very river that we're looking the great Mara River that those iconic pictures and films have been taken of these great herds of wildebeest migrating to and fro across the river. Now, they don't all make it, of course, as Graham is about to show you. Uh, one of them has unfortunately met its end. It's over there. No, that's, well, that's, there. That's a crocodile, yes. There we are, well done. That one there is a wildebeest that is not, in fact, swimming. It has, in fact, died. And it will shortly be eaten, I've no doubt, by that very large reptilian. That crocodile is probably 10 feet long. It's absolutely enormous. And it probably only needs to eat once every two years or so. Hello, Jen Ward. You say this is fantastic. This is absolutely unbelievable. I am so amazed that we're able to be here. It is very, very special indeed. There we are. We're just pop zooming there onto that enormous crocodile. Mm. Now, James Cole, you ask a very valid question as we pan across to some hippopotami, a pod thereof, sitting here in this incredible river. You say you wonder if Gnorman the Gnormus Gno, Gnu is here from Cheetah Plains. Uh, he is not, believe it or not, and that is because he is a different subspecies of the blue wildebeest, the one that we've been looking at there, that small herd of the greater population of 15, 1.5 million. Uh, they are called the brindled gnu, and although they are the same species, the difference is that they have got a very white beard, whereas Norman, the nomates gnu of cheetah plains, has got a black beard and that's how you know the difference. Obviously the zebra are there, they are the same kind of zebra, they're Birchall zebra. And then we've got one other quite special animal here that we don't see any of in the Kruger Park or anywhere near those environs and it's called a Thompson's Gazelle and it is quite similar to... Well, there are a few across there, we're just going to see if we can find one for you. You got them? Um, they're very similar to our national animal, or well, the South African national animal. Look at him, there he is. He's a magnificent fellow, and he is similar, like I say, to a springbok, which is our national animal. Also doesn't occur in the Kruger National Park, but they occur in great numbers here. So let me just give you some of the scale of what's going on here. We have got a situation where there are one and a half million wildebeest, plus minus, 300 or so thousand virtual zebra, about 200,000 of those Thompson's gazelles and most of them right now as we speak are on a piece of land that is smaller than the Sabi Sands. Now I think that's absolutely incredible. Sabi Sands about 600 square kilometers, this area 510 square kilometers. They do obviously spread a long way then across the river where these ones are into the Mara and the entire area, the whole Mara Serengeti ecosystem, is about 20,000, am I correct there? Yes, 20,000 square kilometers, which is just slightly smaller than the Kruger National Park. So, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here. Christine, you say, is this live? 
Well, I'm talking to you, Christine. It is as live as you and I, and it's wonderful to have you with us. We have not recorded anything today. Well, we recorded a few things for some B-roll. We had an amazing experience, just probably about, what, about 12 o'clock your time. We watched some wildebeest you know, swimming across the river. We wondered if they would be devoured by the death in the deep, these enormous crocodiles, but they were not. And we watched them for about half an hour two big herds of wildebeest crossing the river in a different place from here and we came here because we rather hoped this herd would come across at some stage during the afternoon they might do that but at the moment they haven't oh there's a marabou stalk no chance no chance <laughs> it's coming down there you'll get it no not yet there you might get it now hello aqua i'm afraid i missed your question i'm going to ask for it again Oh, are we in a covered vehicle? Um, Aqua, we are in a covered vehicle. We have to be. Uh, that's the law in these parts. And you don't tangle with the law, as you know, Aqua. And you say, what's the temperature? I'd put it at a fairly pleasant 28 degrees Celsius or so, which is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the temperature here. Of course, we are not far from the equator. We're just south of it, which means there really is hardly a season in this area. We're quite high up which also means that the temperature is pretty, I mean, it gets hot, but it doesn't get blistering, I don't think, too often. Look at that river. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Hello, Gracie. It's very nice to hear from you. I'm all the way in East Africa, in Kenya, a beautiful, beautiful country. And you say, how fun is this? It is such fun, isn't it? And we're looking at hippos, your favorite animal. We're looking at crocodiles. We're looking at dead wildebeest. But mostly we're looking at an incredible abundance of life, the likes of which I have never seen before. I've never been here before, everybody. And I'm just utterly astounded. We've been driving around this reserve since early this morning. And there has not been one stage where we have not been seeing animals or vistas as far as the eye can see. And where Graham's pointing now, if he just pans slightly upwards, what you'll see is an escarpment there on the Rift Valley. And that is miles and miles away, and between here and there are these unbelievable clearings. Just incredible spaces with masses and masses of the most fertile grasslands you can imagine that support this unbelievable abundance of animals. And it really is a true privilege and honor to be here, A, and B, what a joy to bring it all to you during the course of our standard issue safari. Isn't that amazing? And safari haze, you say, can anyone just drive through here? Yes, they can, actually, believe it or not. Anyone can drive through here. Um, you, sometimes you can have a guide. Sometimes if you've got the right kind of car, you can bring it in here, and that's no problem. Um, but a lot of the places here run a little bit like the ones in South Africa do, where there are lodges in various pretty places, and then they've got guides, and you drive down with the guide. But you can come in here entirely on your own. There are wonderful campsites here, and so it really does allow quite a lot of freedom. We don't really drive off-road here much, but sometimes you can get permission to do that. Now, kitty, kitty, bang, bang. Obviously, we've been talking a lot about the drought in South Africa, and you want to know if there's a drought here. Well, we were chatting to the warden today, a man of some 20 years' experience in this area, and he says this is a dry year, probably the driest for the last few seasons, but I don't think they're in, in anything like the drought that we are there back at Juma. So, yes, the river's probably slightly lower, but no, there's no real trouble as far as a lack of water goes. There are just hectares and acres and acres and acres of this amazing grassland that is abundant with life. Animals are able to eat at will. We've seen hyenas today, we've seen serval today, we've seen buffalo and giraffe and elephant, and Thompson's gazelles and Birchall's zebras and these wonderful brindled gnu hippos. Uh, we even saw elephants, believe it or not. So it really has been an amazingly abundant time for us. 
Hello, Aaron in New Zealand. You hope we see some new birds? Well, Peter Brat and I have been fascinatedly staring out of the window trying to find a few new birds. They highlight probably being something called a purple grenadier, believe it or not, uh, which uh, I'm not going to try and show you because I don't have a book here. I've got an app, but I think it will reflect the sun. Now, we're not able to actually move while we're filming because that will result in everybody watching getting seasick. So... We will just pan from side to side until you get tired of looking at this particular view and then we might go and see what else we can find. I'd like to show you some topi. They're an antelope we don't get up there. We do get some sesame sometimes in the Kruger and they're a similar species. Um, I'd like to show you a bit more of the Thompson's gazelles. We might go back to a hyena den that we found a little bit earlier on and perhaps a Maasai giraffe. We talk so often on the show there about the different kinds of giraffe that we get there's seven or nine, depending on who you listen to, subspecies of the giraffe. Well, there's a totally different subspecies up here called the Maasai giraffe. And that's just brilliant. We'll try and find you one of those too. Ooh. Just quickly, there's... A, oh, you're not going to be able to do that. No, never mind, everybody. Oh, let me just... I'm just going to pan around everybody. And what we're going to do is show you something familiar as it disappears. Oh no, is there another one anywhere? There was there, everybody, a helmeted guinea fowl. All right, let's have one more look there at the wildebeest. And we're going to head off now and see what else we can find. And who are we going to hand them back to, Kirsten? And we're going to hand you back to Steph who is with the inimitable Styx Pride, and with any luck, we too will find some lions.